um, sorry, we have um, Jeff uh, Gardner, our cloud specialist, um, helping the um, helping folks in uh, Vancouver um, campus, and we have um, Nick Rocking, our RDM specialist in Okanagan, and we have uh, my colleague and George Parker, um, like monitoring the the network, and we will we also have um, my uh, our manager. Elizabeth Kinney watching us to make sure how we did a good job. <laughs> yeah, so, um, okay, so before we start, we would like to acknowledge that University of British Columbia, um, um, both campuses are located on traditional ancestral and unceded territory of Musqueam people and Sirix people. Um, so this is a webinar form, so you are muted uh, when you uh, enter the room. Uh, but feel free to raise your virtual or physical hands to uh, if you have any questions. Uh, the webinar will be recorded. Uh, it will be, po uh, be uh, available uh, in probably next week or maybe next next week, uh, depend uh, if everything goes well. Um, and um, you can find the slides uh, in the in OSF page, and you can find the um, like. Uh, the individual OSF page for each course. And um, so again, if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand or post them in the Q&A sessions. Or uh, um, if you want, we can unmute you and we can um, talk to each other. So um, it, it's assumed that you already connect to Sokai if you haven't done so today, um, please. Um, connect to Sokai, we are going to use it as well, although it's um, most of the stuff will be in Chinook. Okay, so we um, we appreciate if you can um, put your feedback, your comments, your suggestions um, to our survey, and you can find the link in our OSF page. All right, so um, today we are going to talk about Chinook and Globus. We are going to, uh, in the first section, we are going to um, introduce the Chinook and the, its data storage platform. And um, in the second session, we'll talk about the Globus, which is the data transfer tool. And we will focus on the third se section, which is to use Globus to transfer the data between Sokai and Chinook, and between Chinook and your personal computer. Um, uh, if we have time, we, we will go through the last section, which is Globus command line. Uh, that will be more um, more confusing, but um, most of the in most of the cases you don't need to use that. Okay, um, okay so first uh, introduction to Chinook. So Chinook is an object storage platform dedicated for UVC researchers. Uh, we have up to um, twenty petabytes usable storage, and uh, it's it has geo replication, so ten terabytes in. UBC Okanagan and 10 terabytes in um, UBC Vancouver. So it, it means if you transfer the data to Chinook, it will be automatically uh, replicated into the other um, campus. Um, so if there's any disaster or some bad thing happen, you have another copy in the other campus. Um, so uh, if you are a faculty, UBC faculty member, if you are a principal investigator who can hold a research funding, you can apply for an allocation as the owner. Uh, of course, once you become the owner, you can share the, you can make your um, team members, uh, uh, collaborators to access to your allocation. Okay. So um, I mentioned that um, Chinook is a so-called object storage which is quite different from the file storage. So the file storage is what you usually see in your laptop in, for example, Sokai, in high, high performance computing in your uh, personal computing, uh, regardless whether it's a Mac or Windows or Linux. Um, so the difference between these two is that the files, um, the file storage, which is shown um, on the left panel, uh, you can see it, it's kind of uh, it's a hierarchical folder structure. You have a like main folder, and under the main folder you have folder one, two, three, and under each folder you may have more subfolders. Um, so that means you have a file path uh, to 
for each file and you use that part to find the file. So that's how you do that in, like we did a lot in previous sessions in Sakai, uh, which is quite annoying, right? Sometimes if you are using command line, but it would be very uh, convenient if you, you are using graphic interface, uh, using your mouse to just double click. So that's, um, that's file storage. You can simply copy, move, delete. Um, so I guess everybody is familiar with that. Um, but in Chinook, it uses uh, object storage. So it doesn't have this hierarchical structure. It only has a metadata, like um, the sheet um, showing, showing here. So this, this star just indicate an ID, a unique ID for each file. So it, if you want to find a file like this, it will try to search for this ID in this metadata sheet and then goes to here to look for it. So um, it's a kind of plat, uh, plat, um, flat platform. Um, so the file storage is more like the library storing the books. So each file, uh, each book represents a file. You go to the specific room which is a folder. And then in the room, you go to a specific shelf and get the, uh, go to the specific layer and then take the file. But in uh, object storage, you actually tear those books uh, into uh, pages and you store the pages uh, in, the, uh, in a big warehouse. And you know actually where the pages are because you record in, the, in a big sheet that the location, uh, like how high <laughs> and how, how uh, like what's the rank of the, that pile of uh, for that page. So you can easily get the page. Um, so it's good. So because of these features in objects storage, it's quite cost efficient. You don't need the like extra room in the library to like walk around. It's more efficient. And it's easy to expand because if you want to expand the library, you need to build a new building with, with like, with, um, like you need to consider uh, it won't affect the um, previous uh, building structure. And, but in object storage, you just get a new warehouse and just put it beside. So, um, so it's easy to expand and you have quick access to files. Um, because it has a big index like sheet, you can quickly get the ID and get the file. Um, and it has additional um, safeguards when data preservation, deletion, and retention policies required. Um, but but um, it also has some um, disadvantages. For example, it cannot open the file to read. So in the library, you can just take the book and just read it. Um, but uh, since you tear those uh, book into pages, you need to collect all of the pages uh, out from the warehouse and assemble them into a book and then read it. It's kind of a download the, all of the data into your local computer and open it. So it's, it cannot be mounted to your um, desktop as a remote hard drive. Um, if you want to move the file in the warehouse, you need to first copy, paste, and then delete the original copy. So it cannot simply move, like change the directory, change the path. Um, so the, in the file storage, uh, it has a hierarchical structure and files can op be open quickly and easy to man manipulate. Um, and, but it's more expensive and not appropriate for large file. So um, you may want to ask, when do I need Chinook? Especially when you, you are not dealing with very huge data, your external hard drive, your, your computer's uh, hard drive um, can already handle all of your data. Um, so, but maybe one day you have a very big, you have some very big data, like terabytes level, you want to backup uh, your personal computer or your lab uh, computer, uh, doesn't have that much space. You want uh, like a second place to back up the data and you have lots of intermediate data kind of 
data generated during the analysis, you want to keep for a while and you don't have the space to store them. Um, you can archive those data in, in Schnook. Um, and uh, if you have a very huge data, you want to uh, like um, share with your external collaborator who is not in, maybe even in Canada, then you may want to consider Schnook uh, and Globus. So, um, and the, and if you want the data to be stored in a UBC, then Chinook is a, a good option for you because um, it's in, same with Sokai, it's located in um, UBC network. And uh, if you want your data to be geo-replicated, Chinook can, can do that. So uh, we have two types of Chinook allocation. The first one is called regular allocation. Um, in this allocation, uh, the owner can share it with any external uh, collaborator uh, with any global account because you can even use your Gmail to create an account. Um, the, the second uh, allocation is called restricted. That's for um, people who want to um, store uh, some um, sensitive data, some data that um, needs to be restricted into uh, in UBC network. So in this allocation, um, the the owner can only share the data with um, CWL. So if you if you have an external collaborator you want to get it, you need to sponsor your supervisor or you, you yourself need to sponsor a guest CWL to them. Okay, any questions? No. Nope. So I did a good job. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so next section, uh, Globus. Um, so Globus is a tool that helps you to connect to Chinook because Chinook is a object storage. So it's very different from the, um, like the um, uh, file storage you usually see in um, like most of the computers. Um, so the, for now, Globus is the only tool that can help you to connect to um, Chinook. And the Globus is just a data transfer tool. So you have uh, like endpoint A or site A, your data is located in A and uh, you, you want to transfer it to B, you can use Globus. And the beauty is that you don't, the Globus has a um, online interface. You just need a browser to open it. Um, so if you can just use your laptop here and connect to internet and get, uh, open a browser and turn on uh, Globus and then do the transfer. After the trans after you submit the request, then you can just shut down your laptop. You don't need to like keep your laptop on for forever to uh, let the transfer down, uh, let, let the transfer finish. So um, Globus, um, like there's uh, some advantages of using Globus. Um, for example, it's fast. Uh, to be honest, most of the tool <laughs> Uh, won't be that slow. The, the bottleneck of transferring data is always, in most cases, is the network condition in both ends. Right. So um, like most of the tools can, can do fast uh, transfer. And the second uh, is that it transfer data um, and encrypt it. So it's, it's secure, secure and it's also reliable. It keeps trying. If there's something happen, it will keep trying and it can also uh, pause and resume the transfer. So if um, like uh, if the transfer is um, inter uh, interrupted, then it can like uh, retry again um, to finish the um, the entire to finish the transfer. And also after the data is transferred in default, Globus will check the file integrity for you, so you don't need to worry about that. And and it's also convenient. So for example, it can manage the transfer through a web browser. You don't need to like keep your laptop on um, during the transfer. And you it manage the transfer remotely. So for example, if your data is in the your know, lab, lab computer, you want to transfer the data, uh, data from your lab computer to Chinook, then you can do it any anywhere in the world, as long as you have the internet connected. And you it can, you can get notified when, when the transfer starts, has some issues, uh, or uh, the transfer finishes. You can get the email from Globus uh, and you can check the data. 
uh, once you receive the email. Um, and also it's widely distributed. You, uh, when we're going to login Globus later, you can see uh, there's a giant list of all like lots of institutes or universities. So that, that means you can, if your collaborators in, uh, is in other university, they probably already have Globus installed. So it's easy to share with uh, other people. Um, okay, so now let's go to Globus to set up account. Uh, so if you can, let me see where's my browser. Okay, so open a web browser and type G-L-O-B-U-S globus.org. Again, G-L-O-B-U-S.org. Then you should be able to see this um, web page. And in the in this corner, you can see a login button. Click on that. Uh, okay, so now you you can see you can um, log in with Gmail or your ORC ID. But today, since we all have CWL, so we can select uh, University of British Columbia. You can see this is a super long list. Uh, that means all of these institutes have Globus, have purchased Globus or have Globus service. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, oh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, if you type UBC, then it will pump that up and then click on continue. And you can see um, we ha I have this CWL authentication open. So that means um, your password goes to UBC website, not goes to Globus website, which is good thing, right, <laughs> to, to everybody. Um, so just enter your login name and um, password and authenticate with MFA with dual. Okay, now I'm in. So so that's the first step. And the second step is try to install Globus personal, um, try to install Globus into your um, local computer. We're going to, because we are going to use it later. So move your mouse to here, collection, and move to here, search, and click on that. So you will see some reason. Uh, I think you, if you didn't use Globus, then the list will be empty. And then your, okay, so click on bookmarks. And here you can see get Globus connect personal and click on that. It will try to scan like get your operating system. If it's Windows, you will see this button. If it's Mac, then you will see an Apple there. Uh, and click on that, it will download. Jerry, there's a hand raised as you're waiting for this to load. Sorry? Uh, someone's got their hand raised as uh, you're oh. waiting for this to load. I'm gonna allow them to talk, if that's all right. Uh, let me finish this step because the installation will, will take some time. So that will be- okay. a and for questions. Perfect. Thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll just quickly talk over you that I, I, I don't know where you're at because I got stalled when I was logging into Globus because it was asking me whether I wanted to link to another account and I thought you were going to tell me whether I should or I shouldn't. And so oh. I'm way behind where you are right now. Um, so if, when, when you log into Globus, you see something else? So just hit continue. Um, there's a couple of steps that Oh, okay, okay. So, um, yeah, we have we have some someone here um, 
showing this, uh, like showing the same thing in their uh, screens, just um, based on them, just click on uh, the continue. And there were some extra steps. Okay, Sorry, I didn't see that. Um, or if I don't have anything, I have something like what you've got, but I don't have recent or bookmarks or your collection. I don't have anything. I've just got a search box, a path, and then select all. Anyway, I, I don't know how to get okay, to where so you are. You see this, right? Yes. Uh, if you click on the search. Oh, good. Thank you. That's oh. the step I missed. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and then you can see this get Globus Connects Personal. And you click yep. on that. Okay, thank you. No problem. Sorry, I didn't see that uh, that uh, warning or error message before. So um, yeah, apologize if I um, move too quickly. Um, okay, I think I already downloaded. Okay, uh, you download and you double click on that because I'm already um, installed. So um, I will not uh, walk you through the installation process. Um, the, during the installation, it just ask you where you want to install and you give a name of your personal computer. You can name it like, for example, mine is, um, I think Jerry MSI. Um, yeah, you can just give it a random name. It's called collection name. Um, yeah, if we can, um, yeah, if you have any questions, just uh, raise your hand to, uh, if you have any questions during the installation. So I'm going to move back to, so we're, we're going to need this later, um, not for now. Um, okay, so the next section, um, transfer the data. Um, so here is the outline. Uh, first, I'm going to onboard everyone into our Chinook allocation. Um, my manager, Elizabeth, has an allocation, so we, we are going to onboard you to her, um, to hers. Um, so, and second, we are going to try to transfer the data between Sokai and Chinook. And third, we are going to change, try to change the directory in Sokai and Chinook. So you can tell the difference between uh, file storage and um, object storage. And fourth, we're going to transfer the data between your laptop and Chinook. But it, that requires you to install the globals into your um, personal computer. Um, and fifth, um, we're going to talk about some tips of using Chinook with Globers. Okay, so the first step is my job. I'm going to create a guest collection for you and uh, we named arc underscore UBC arc uh, underscore bootcamp. And then I'm going to create a new group um, and call it the same thing. And the, oh, go ahead, please. So, uh, I guess maybe it was covered before. I think there were maybe you couldn't cover it after this one. What exactly is this question? Is it a device or is oh. it a data set? Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I didn't I explain that. So, a collection is just uh, like, mm, it's just like a place you created okay. that for, uh, it's not a, a exact a folder. It, so if you have like, um, if you are onboarded to Chinook, then you have the control of some space with, uh, based on your request. For example, you need 10 terabytes. You have that 10 terabyte space and you can play with this 10 terabyte space by uh, creating uh, an ID. Like for example, you want to name it you with your uh, my Chinook space, so that my Chinook space is called a collection. So you 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 have a warehouse. You need to put a name there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can have multiple names there because uh, you can, for example, build a wall inside and then give it a room number. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it, it doesn't do partition to you <laughs> for you. It's just um, kind of, um, it's, it's easier to do partition in your, uh, than in your uh, laptop. Yeah. Yeah. I have a few questions on Zoom. Oh. I included a space in my collection name. Will this cause problems? Uh, I included a space in. No, it won't. Thank, thank you, Jeff. Um, uh, you can change it once you install it. Uh, uh, if you open it, um, So you can see this little blue G button um, on the task, in the taskbar for Mac, it should be on the top right. Um, and right click on that, there's an option, general, uh, let me see. It looks like I cannot, let me see, should, should be able to. Since I'm, I was wrong, it cannot be changed. But anyway, uh, space doesn't matter. So it should, should not be a problem. Um, the worst case is that you uninstall and reinstall again uh, with a different name. Uh, okay, I have a Globus Connect personal story. It is prompting me for collection details such as collection name and description. Um, nope, you just give it uh, any name you want. Like your, uh, for example, um, mine would be Jerry's computer. Jerry's computer. Um, just get, try to give it a name that um, have little chance to um, be similar or be the same <laughs> with other people. If you put a MacBook, then probably thousands of, of users will have the same similar name, uh, which is quite difficult when you search for it. So you just need to put the collection name and description. You can put anything, just type three dots. It's also fine. <laughs> so uh, because you can simply uninstall uh, and reinstall, so it doesn't matter that much. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new guest, guest collection. Just give our um, Chinook space a name so that you can um, search for it. Uh, let me go to... Okay, what I need to do is search UBC Arc. This, you don't need to follow me. You, you, you don't have the power to do it unless uh, my manager gives gives you. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Chinook. And I'm going to be here. And I have... Uh, is that correct? <laughs> oh, EK. Yeah, see, uh, we need her permission. <laughs> uh, okay, so now you can see I, we already have some folders, uh, but I'm not going to use them. We don't want to screw up things there. So what I, I'm going to do is create a new folder called UBC Arc. Who can, yeah. I'm getting really confused because you said that the thing we, we were dealing with objects, and not with files, so there would be no folders or hierarchies, but it seems like these are folders. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, that's great class. Yeah, I'm going to, um, okay. yeah, I'm going to explain. Okay. Yeah, so you can see, um, uh, I created a UBC Arc Bootcamp. So yeah, you just asked the question like one second before I <laughs> move to this topic. Um, so this is the um, it, this is object storage. So it doesn't have the hierarchical uh, structure, but it doesn't mean that you cannot have some tag 
in each file. Okay, so you, what you can see here is actually not a real folder. It's just a tag you attach to the file and you create a new folder. This folder maybe has only like uh, 1K big or 500 bytes uh, because it's empty, right? Um, and this folder doesn't have any data, but it can be the tag for any data under it, within this folder. So to search for the um, for the data you want you want to store in Chinook, you are not we are not going to uh, ask you to remember the long weird ID the <laughs> Chinook system is going to assign to everybody. But um, the best way is still the folder structure like folder one, folder two, folder three. Um, however, that's not the real folder. It's just some like tag or names or additional ID of each file. Okay, uh, okay now I'm in the UBC Arc Bootcamp. So now I'm going to create a new guest collection by click on share. And there's a add collection, a get guest collection button and continue. So this can only be done when you are the manager or the owner of this uh, Yoshinoka allocation, uh, the student or, um, or regular users cannot do that. And you only need to set up once. You don't have to do it every time when you try to transfer the data or connect to uh, Chanel. Okay, so it has a directory. Um, but again, it's not a real directory, just tag <laughs> to help people. Um, in the other end, uh, in the other side, which is the computer world, um, it, it actually saw this as a very long weird ID. So it's just uh, good for us. Um, there are some other options. Um, it's it's just they are all optional. You don't need to put anything there. Um, the only thing you want to worry about is this display name. Um, so I'm going to do our boot camp so that it's easy for everybody. Okay. And create collection. Okay, now I have this collection created. Um, and if I go back to here, instead of Chinook, if I search for UBC Arc Bootcamp, it will be listed. However, you guys won't because I haven't shared the access with, with you. Uh, I'm now the only user, I'm now the owner, and I'm now the manager. Um, so what I need to do is to share with all of you guys, but I cannot do that one by one. So there's a um, better way to do that, uh, which is the number two here, creates a group. So back to uh, Global's interface. Um, now I'm in file manager. If you look down, there's a groups button, click on that. And there's a create new group here. So it's good for uh, those um, lab that has like many students. Um, and you can simply like add more new member and remove the graduate students there. Um, okay, let's call it UBC Arc Boot Camp. And viewer by all Globus users. So great. Okay, now how to join? I'm not, I cannot invite everybody one by one. So there's some settings here. Uh, if I click on that and edit policy. So the first one is membership, membership requests are approved automatically if all policies are met. And then
user may request membership if they are a login global user. If you select the default one invited to join, that means you must send them an invite and then they click on that. If I select a login global user, they can, they don't need the invite, they can just join um, by themselves. Okay. So, Uh, let me go to members. Invite other people to join. Uh, okay. So uh, now, if you go to members, you can see now I'm the only one, and the role is administrator with a key. Um, and if I type overview and get the share, shareable link, and if I'm going back to my OSF page, oh, it takes a little. You can also just search for them. You can? Yeah, just search for because you made the group search. But so can you join? If you go to groups and type in UBC R boot camp, it will show up automatic. Okay, so you can, can, you, can you join that? Uh, I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, um, we have a, uh, not a question, a comment that, that uh, you can search, you can go to um, groups and search here, UBC ARC bootcamp. Okay, <laughs> then that's good. I don't need to share the link. <laughs> if you click on that and try to join, I I'm going to post the, um, the link here as well. So use for links. You see, I can also learn something from you guys. <laughs> okay, so if you go to the um, oh, the course page, um, 9C576, and if you scroll down, and the last useful link, if you click on that, then you should be able to join. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So now you should be able to search, go back to your file manager, UBC underscore arc underscore bootcamp, Search for that and see whether you can get in. Uh, Oh, okay, yeah, um, I missed one one step. Okay, so you join the you join the group. That doesn't mean you you have access to the allocation because the um, group is a global group. It's the group of the tool. It's not the group of uh, Chinook. Um, so what I'm going to do is I, as a manager or an administrator, I go to my collection. And I have a bunch of collections that manage or administrated by me. And the last one is UBC Arc Bootcamp. And I'm going to add permissions to you guys. So click on permission. And now we only have UBC Arc Sokai, um, our system admin and myself. So I'm going to add permissions to not every not like one by one, but a group. So I can select a group and select this group and make you guys can read and write. 
So could you search and try again? And yeah, the folder. Okay, great. So um, now uh, once you are in UBC, uh, Arc UBC Bootcamp collection, try to find here a new folder and put my first name, last name, uh, put an underscore between. Uh, that's a good habit for when using uh, Unix or Linux system. Although it's not necessary here, <laughs> but it's better to do that. If you don't want to um, like uh, use your real name, that's totally fine. Um, yeah, so you can just make, make a fake name as long as you can remember that. Um, okay, so if you can create uh, any questions so far? Anybody has trouble? Oh. Yeah, um, my file is grayed out. Uh-huh. I can find the group from uh, file manager, not from collections. File manager. So um if you I, go, okay. go, go ahead, please. All right. Yeah. So um if I if I go to groups, right, uh, it's saying that I'm not currently not a member of any groups. But okay. if I go to file manager, right, and I do go to the collection box and uh -huh. search for ALC um, uh, UBC ALC uh, bootcamp, I can find it. Except okay. that when I click on it, when I click on it, right. You get uh, the it, access denied, right? Yeah, I get a permission denied error. Okay, okay. So if you go back to groups and search uh -huh. here, UBC ARC bootcamp, UBC underscore ARC underscore bootcamp. Did you UBC. see something here? Uh, oh yeah, okay. My, and you and then I have this arrow. join group. Yeah, join group. Okay, and then I'll submit application. And then you um, go back to file manager and search for UBC underscore arc underscore bootcamp again. Aha, okay. So now I, yes, I am seeing a list of uh, Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's created by everybody, and you can uh, you can see um, the new folder button here on the right. Uh huh. And you click on and that, then... make a new folder with your first name underscore J, uh, last name, or any name you want. It's working. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, sorry, uh, I may move too quickly. And maybe it's too confusing because the collection name and the group name is the same. <laughs> I should use a different name here. But the idea is that you um, Globus is just a tool. It can be used in Sokai, it can be used in Chinook, it can be used in any, any other places that install Glo Globus. So it can also be used in your laptop. Um, so Globus collection name is the space you own there, or you have access there. But Group name is um, group name is just the Globus um, user group. It doesn't do anything. It's just like a club. <laughs> you, are, you guys are joined together. Um, but to get the drink, you have to go to the bar. And the bar 
uh, is now in this case is Chinook, although they have the same name. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for making uh, people confused. Um, okay, so back to the slide. Oh. So anybody have, have trouble? Do you have trouble to connect? Okay, so now back to the slides. The next step we are going to do is to transfer the data from Sokai to Chinook. And uh, we, we need you guys to connect to Sokai now. Um, and I will be waiting for a few minutes if you are not here. So once you log in Sokai, um, just stay there. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, um, please. Uh, thank, you. thank you for your patience. I'm going to wait for uh, one minute to let people get in. So once you log in Sokai, you should be a, you should be in your um oh <laughs> things I need to do that. You should be at your home directory and we're going to run a command like type cp dash space dash r space slash arc arc slash project Jerry. Jerry, oh. for the virtual learners, we can't see your command line. It's a little bit too low. Oh, I see. Okay. Yes. Sorry about that. You're doing great. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for reminding. Can you see them now? Um, a little bit higher. How about that? Okay. That, that, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Nick. Um, so, um, at your home directory, do copy cp space dash r space slash arc slash project. We're going to do uh, copy something from our project space and tr dash boot cap dash one slash. You can press tab after you type uh, uh, after you type boot. <laughs> And then uppercase Chinook. Uh, yeah, uppercase Chinook and folder. So just this, sorry. Uppercase Chinook and space folder one. Okay, and press enter. Uh, if you see no such file, please let me know. <laughs> okay, so now in your home directory, you should have a folder one here. Okay, we're going to use it in Chinook. So let's keep it. Uh, in this folder, if you cd into folder one, you should see three files. I'm going to browse it for you. And if I'm using more star, it will list all of the file content. So the first file, file one.txt has one inside. File two has two. File three has has three, which are quite simple. Just one byte, one uh, one digit in each file, and then we are going back to our browser, um, Globus interface, and he, on the top right there's a panels. So now we are at one panel set, and we need this two panel interface. So click on this guy in the middle. And so now on the left, we are 
uh, Chinook, which is UBC Arc Bootcamp. And on the right, click on, click on the search here and type UBC Arc. Now it's already there. So the second one, UBC Arc Sokai, click on that. It may ask you to um, to authenticate with your CWL, but if not, then that would be great. <laughs> may or may not. So if you scroll down, you should be able to see the folder one here. Right? Yeah, so I think to Okay, so if you see identity required and you see uh, your email, UBC email address, um, it may not be the real uh, UB, uh, email. Um, just click on that. Yeah, it looks like email. you don't have that email, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that email is, um, is created by uh, Globus people um, because they don't have the access to our real email address. So that they just create a one for you. That's not a real email, but it's the global uh, ID. Um, so that that's the sign that they don't have a. Uh, they cannot see your real email address. So do we select that, or do we select University of uh, so Select the email address you see in the in the page. Uh, even it's not correct. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, sorry. While I was copying the folder, I got an error that have now fixed. So I missed the steps in Globus. Uh, I'm not sure which step. Um, so, okay. So after so after you go back from Sokai to Chinook, let me how to close it. <laughs> Okay, so you should you should see this, right? You just create a folder here and you move your mouse to the top right. And there's a panel, three panels. Select the middle one. And then here you should, um, here you should, there's a search uh, word, click on search and search for UBC ARC. And you will see Sokai, UBC ARC Sokai um, as the second, click on that. And if you see I, identity require, um, so, um, and there's an email, like your, it's probably your name or your CWL at UBC.ca, click on that one and you should be able to log in. And if you scroll down, you can see the folder one um, here because it's, you should be able, you should be at your home directory slash home slash uh, your CWL. Okay, so on the left, um, find your, <laughs> name and double click. Don't go to other people's folder. <laughs> and now I'm in slash my name slash. And we're going to transfer the first fo folder like this guy. Click on the right, right panel and find folder one, select that. And you can see this start button now, you can click, it's not gray now. It's highlighted and click on start. So it will go from, the photo one will be copied from um, the right to the left. And you will receive, you can check the activity here on the left. Um, it shows UBC Arc Sokai to UBC Arc Bootcamp and transfer completed. Uh, if you go back to the file manager and here, uh, you see the fo this folder is still empty. That's because you need to refresh. 
and you see a photo one here. Okay, so now you have the photo one in both your um, Sokai and um, Chinook. So let's take a break and come back at 10. Thank you. So far, so good, right? Yeah. So far, easier. Yeah, so I was wondering though. So, I mean, we might, we or someone else might have to do all of these that you yes. can. Yeah. You know? He can't. He can that person can give you the power to do this. Yeah, so I do I, I have I have a group and I have that power. Oh okay. share it with other yes. people around the lab. So I'll have to do everything. Yes. Can you yeah. Oh, we have the restricted allocation as well. Oh, yeah. Um, you first need to get here. Yeah. So, if you want to
Okay, so um, we just did the first transfer from Sokai to Glo uh, to Global to Chinook through Globus. Um, now, um, in Sokai, we have your home directory folder one, five, file one, file two, file three. In Chinook, you have first name, last name folder, file one, file two, file three. And the next um, transfer, we're going to see what will happen if we change the name of file three to file four in Sokai home directory and then do the transfer again. Okay, so let's go back to the um, to the Globus interface and in Sokai, in the right part, if you double click, we have three files. Select this one, file number three, and there's a rename button here. You can change three to file four. Okay, so the renaming is done. And if we go to the left and click on here, and if I try to do the same thing, you can see the rename is gray because on the left, Sokai is the file storage system, but the, on the left in Chinook, it's the object storage system, which cannot allow you to change the file name. The file name is kind of a file ID that unique to that. So you cannot touch it. Um, okay, so now if I try to like, let's go back one level up and same thing on the right, one level up. Again, find your folder one and do the transfer. But before you start, click on here, transfer time up timer option. There's a sync only transfer new or changed files. So select that. So you have a different options to help you to check whether these two files are the same. The default is checksum, which check the kind of contents. You can just retreat it, it change, check the contents. Uh, and file does not exist in the, on the destination. File size is different. Modification time is new, uh, newer. Um, yeah, you can select different options, but um, the default is checksum, which is the best. Although it takes the longest time if you, your file is really big. Um, okay, select that and then click on start. And it should be down in a second. Let's go back to check a uh, task queued. Okay, so um, here after transfer from Sokai, you should have one, two, four because you cha we changed the, the file three to file four. Um, in Chinook, we should have one, two, three, four because Actually, the contents of file four is the same with file three. Um, but if we check, if we check the, the date of the time, uh, let's go back, the transfer should be done. Uh, go back to file manager and go to your left panel and see whether you have Num file four here. Okay. So you can see one, two, number uh, file one. So the time is, um, I guess it's using a different time zone, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, 4 p.m., 56 minutes, um, five, but file four, 5 p.m. So it only it didn't touch file one, file two, file three, because the content is the same. So and file three, we don't have file three anymore in Sokai. So in this transfer, it didn't overwrite file one and file two because we turn on the syn synchronization um, option. And it only transfer file four because in the destination, which is Chinook, there's no file four. 
So that's that's how it works. Okay, so you can um you can play with this guy uh, this one um after uh, the workshop um by turn on delete. So it will like try to it will try to uh, overwrite. Uh, if you change the file content of file two .txt in Sockeye and repeat the transfer, but with delete, you can see the only file two will be um, will be overwritten because you change the file content. Okay, so you can play with that. Um, but we are um, we will keep on moving now. So change the directory in um, Sockeye and Chinook. Um, Okay, so under file folder one in Chinook, um, we are going to make a new folder called folder one underscore subfolder one. Let's do that. So now I'm in folder one. Let's do a new folder, folder one underscore subfolder one. Now we have a new subfolder here at the bottom. I uh, hope everybody can see it. And then repeat it in Sockeye. So in Sockeye, go to folder one. We should have only three files, one, two, four. And again, we click on new folder and then for folder one, subfolder one. Okay, now we have both, both of them in both locations. And then you, if we try to rename the folder, uh, rename the folder uh, in Sockeye and Chinook. So first in Sockeye here, there's a rename button. You can rename it, but you don't have to. Um, you just need to see that the rename button is high, is available. Um, but if you go back to the Sh Chinook uh, or UBC Arc Bootcamp and select this folder, the rename button is not functional. So that's because file system and objects uh, uh, file, object storage system. Um, Okay, so um, you have installed the Globus Connect personal. You have, um, so we are going to, next we are going to transfer the folder one from Chinook to your local computer. So what we need to do is open Globus, uh, Globus, it's already running. So it tells me that, and then, we are, don't touch the left, go to the right, UBC Arc Sockeye, and search for the, uh, the name you just, when you installed, um, when you installed the um, Globus into your local computer. If you name Jerry's computer, if you name uh, Jerry's Globus, doesn't matter if you remember. <laughs> if you don't remember, just right click, this little blue, blue G and option and go to info, the endpoint name. That is the name you, you, uh, you, you put when you install it. And click on that. Um, so that will go to my home directory. There's a bunch of files. And then what we are going to do is go to the left and one level up and select folder one, start transfer. You can also have a note tells you that the directory is being timed out. And so, yeah, I tried again. Uh, we yeah, have- There's too much stuff in my computer. We have, <laughs> we have a question that the, um, uh, there's an error message of, Directory listing time out. Uh, okay, let's, let's see what happened. Apparently, yeah. 
Um, can you show me your home directory on my computer? No. Or you want to know your server? I don't think so. We can, we can figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, maybe yeah, we can yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> no problem. So if you go if you are using Windows, go to your taskbar and there's a little G. If you don't see it, um go to start and search for Globus. Uh mine is here. You just install it. Um, and click on that. And then you should see this little G here. If you move your mouse, you actually can see that already. Uh, Globus Connect, Personal Connected, um, and followed by my name. If you, or you can just right click and select option. Select option and then go to info. And the endpoint names. This is there. If you are using Mac, this blue G will be on the top. The taskbar is on the on the top. So do the same thing. Just find the option. Um, and at access, you can actually add your other drive like D drive um, here. So if you are plugging an external hard drive, then uh, after you plug in that, you can just click on this plus button to add them. You can also find that there if you are plugging in the collections and administered by you in the Globus sidebar. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. So if you go to, um, there's another way. If you go to collection and then administrated by you, if you scroll down, you should see Globus Connect Personal, and the name is also there. But you have to you have to open it, like turn on the um, software to do the transfer. Okay, so let's keep on moving. Okay, so last section. Um, if um, there are some tips when using um, Chinook with Globus, so first of oh, try to organize and optimize the folder structure before you transfer them into Chinook because you cannot rename, you cannot change the move, move the file or move the folder around. So try to organize the folder in Sokai or organize the folder in your laptop or lab computer before you do the transfer to Chinook. Um, and also don't make a very complicated hierarchical structure when you transfer it. Um, if you have thousands of small files, try to pack them or zip them into one big file. That will increase the um, transfer speed. Um, and um, you can turn on the sync option and repeat the same transfer. If you have, for example, if you have uh, like my image, like my uh, uh, experiments, uh, big folder, or my project, and then you keep adding these. Um, like your results into this folder. And then you can simply transfer this folder again and again after maybe every day, every night, uh, if you, your data is generating, like keep, uh, keep uh, growing, um, but turn on that sync option and check whether the file 
uh, check whether the file content is the same or check whether the file is modified or check whether the file is existed or not. So you can do the same thing and you can keep skipping the, like the existed files so that you don't need to like check, oh, uh, what did I transfer like several days ago? I have to like browse the <laughs> browse it in, in Schnook to, to figure out which file I want to transfer. So that, that's quite useful. And um, um, please try to store the files in separate folders when you can, um, uh, where you can easily pull down if you really need that fo the file um, quite often. So for example, I have like 10 files that I don't want to touch, like in this year, you can put them in this, in this folder, but I want to like uh, get this file fre frequently, maybe in a couple of days. So put that file into some places you can easily find uh, when you try to transfer to Shinar. Um, because to, uh, you cannot open them uh, lively. <laughs> Uh, you must download the file to your local computer to open it. Um, and when you try to share the file or folder uh, with other people, you can create a group, just what I did. And add, for example, if your external um, collaborator has a bunch of people uh, or um, lots of team members, that they all need access to the data you can ask them to go create a group and then you share the access to that group. Um, okay, so the biggest one, Global's, <laughs> the most difficult one, uh, Global's command line. So um, we will talk about what is that and how to install it in Sockeye and how to use it um, for Chinook. So Globus CLI is called Globus Command Line Interface. Uh, it's a standalone application that can be installed on any user's machine and used to access to Globus service. So with Globus Command Line, you can like transfer the data, check the usage and rename the file in Chinook. So we're going through one by one. So you don't need to follow me because it's more complicated. Um, you can, uh, but I attach all of the commands in both the slides and also the OSF um, page. You just need to copy and paste um, to run it. Um, so the first step is to install it. To install it, you, we need to load a bunch of modules. Um, So small. <laughs> All right. I really hate the touchpad. <laughs> That's better. Okay, let me go back to my terminal. Okay, so go to my home directory and do module load software collection 2021. No, it should be fine. Hmm? Everyone should be using the default collection. Oh, yeah. it should, should be fine, right? Uh, let's see. Let's remove, remove that 9.4.0. Okay. Module load Python 3.8.10. Pi. Uh, there's a space between uh, and 21.1.2. So module load Python slash 3.8.10 space pi dash pip slash. 21.1.2, and that can help you to install globus.cli. So it's mine is already installed, so it probably tell, tell me that. Uh, oh, okay, so it's already done. And then 
to log in. So your globus is installed in your home directory, which is this dollar home or tilde dot. I just put tilde because I'm lazy <laughs> dot local bin globus and log in. So you will get a U URL and be asked to enter the authentication code. It didn't pop up. Globus. So you are already logged in. Um, that's why I didn't get the get the web page. So you will get this something like this. Please authenticate um, if it's too small. Yeah, you will see this. Please authenticate with Globus here. You got a very long weird code, and you just need to copy this code into the browser, and then you will get another code, and you copy paste here, and you will be logged in. And then, so that's what you see. That's what you see by copy that very long weird code. And then you will see a, another shorter <laughs> code. You go back to your terminal, you go back to Sokai and paste there. Um, oh, yeah. I think I'm a little lost. Maybe, maybe I'm, so, so I got to hear this is the code. Yeah, yeah you just copy it. And okay, it's this part. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go to the okay. browser. Um, okay. uh, to to. to it's a URL. Oh, 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 I see, I see, I see. Okay, yeah. okay, thanks. Yeah, copy, I blur, uh, I make this blurry. You just copy this blurry part mm -hmm. um, to a web browser and it's, it's a URL. You can see it starts from HTTPS colon slash slash. So it's a URL and go to the browser and copy it, paste there and you will get a, you will see, this page and the, the it, this code in the red box, you go back to your terminal and paste there. And then you will be log in. Um, so here it should be arc. UBC arc boot camp. Okay, so let's back to here. Again, tilde dot local bin globus endpoint search UBC arc boot camp. So that will give you an ID. Um, okay, so by running this command, you will get an ID. And you can see I'm the owner and the display name is UPC Arc Bootcamp. And the same thing, So if I do, if I change this to my personal endpoint in, installed in my computer, so if you change this search to whatever you you put when you install your uh, Globus in your laptop, uh, you get another ID.
and then so if you want to see what's in there you can do then globus ls followed by the id uh, do i need yeah. and colon slash so that will be in our schnook allocation we have a bunch of folders here uh all created by by us and this is my folder so if you want to um check what what's in this folder just add this folder name Okay, so there's another folder. So I need to keep adding <laughs> folder one. So now we can see file one, file, uh, there's a subfolder one and file one, file two, file three, file four. Okay, so if you want to transfer, you can follow this command. So global transfer ID one path but the path to file one and then ID two, path two. So for example, if I want to transfer this guy, this file one from Glovers, uh, from um, Chinook to my home laptop, then I need to, to change LS to transfer and Jerry Lee, folder one, file one dot txt to my laptop. My laptop's ID is above listed here by this command. So I'm going to copy this guy and move it back. Again, this is just ID. We need colon slash. That would be my home directory. Okay, so by pressing enter, oh, there's an arrow. Let me see what happened. Recursive or should be used for when transferring directories. Did I transfer the directory? Uh, seems not. Let me add. It doesn't matter if it's if you are using this when transferring the files. Oh, that's weird. Okay, to be safe, just add dash r here, <laughs> although it's just a file, file one.txt. So uh if it's a folder, if you are trying to transfer the entire folder, for example, folder one, um, you must add dash r here. I'm not sure whether people in the room can see that. Okay, so that's um, just like copy and copy dash R. So it's the same thing. Okay. Um, and if you try to rename it, rename a file, remember you cannot rename it, right? You. So for example, if I try to rename the file one to file five, you can do globus transfer the endpoint ID and the folder, uh, file path and file one. So what we need to do is just copy this. Same ID, same path, but a different file name. So it's basically a copy and paste. It's not really moving the file. And then you can go back to the uh, global interface. So for example, if I'm here and find my folder, 
I should see a file. Oh, it's not done yet. <laughs> not a, a mission denied. Oh, I didn't log in um, my own laptop. Uh, we'll see what happened here. So um, after copy this command, we'll just copy this file, file one, to the same folder, same directory in Chinook, um, and rename it as, um, like with a new name, file five. So you will have both file one and file five, but it's just copy and paste. And then you are go going to um, log into um, Globus and then um, use Globus to connect to Chinook and then delete the file one. So it's kind of bypass. It's another like very long reroute, rerouting of uh, renaming the file. It's not just the sim simply rename it, but, um, but done by um, copy and paste and delete. So I'm not going to wait for it to finish. And the last one before we wrap up is how to check the usage. Um, so just copy and paste this command. It's a very long one command, um, but change this red part with the ID in your Chinook. So I have already put this in the um, in OSF page. You don't need to worry too much about the what does this uh, each letter mean. You just need to change the uh, run these two command, change this change this to your at load guest collect in Chinook to get the ID by this first command and um, copy the ID and paste here, paste it to the, um, the red part. And you can have the um, usage in gigabytes. If you want to have, the, have them in terabytes, just add one here and change it to here. So, um, because the, um, yeah, because it's uh, returning the byte, bytes, number of bytes. So it will be K, um, M, G, and T. So depending on how, how many, <laughs> uh, how many times you, um, you do the, um, do the math. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So that's everything. I'm not going to run this command because it will like, running very slowly, it's going to list like check every file and get the size, plus them together and then do the division. <laughs> so it won't, uh, it won't be finishing in like in a short time. Um, I'm copying this uh, command here just for you guys, if you are going to use the Chinook or using the um, Globus for other um, places, you can, use this command to check the usage, like total size, how many data you have put, how much data you, uh, how, how much space you, you will, uh, you, uh, you still have, how, uh, how many, how much free space you have in Chinook. So um, it might be useful in the future. Okay, so that's all for today. Uh, let me check whether this is your question. Oh, okay. I saw you install command line in user home folder. Can I install for all users in my group on Sokai so everyone can access to it? Uh, the, the, mm, it can, first, if you want to install um, for all of your users by one command, then that must be done by our system admin. Or you can ask everyone to run the same thing <laughs> to their own, uh, own directory. Um, the problem is that even the system admin install it for you, you still need them to run it with their CWL. 
um, to check the usage, to check do the transfer. So they cannot use your your account. They cannot use your uh, supervisor's CWL to, to do things because they need this authentication. Um, Can you install it in project specifying the target directory with it? I didn't try. It may, it may work, but it needs more. Uh, it needs you to specify the target, right? But I, I remember the global um, um, documentation suggests that you suggest against that. <laughs> it uh, it suggests you not use like dash dash user, mm. or um, I believe that's the same thing with dash dash prefix. <laughs> that would be the similar idea. So I. I would, I would not do that instead because it's a very simple, uh, it's a very small um, tool. So um, I would suggest people to install it by, um, by themselves and into their own home directory. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't need it, you just need to simply, uh, you just simply need to delete that folder. So um, to get rid of it. Um, the question number two, why would I choose to use Globus command line as opposed to uh, where is it? Uh, just using the browser? So you can, um, only two function you can use, <laughs> you cannot do it in a web browser, which is check the usage first. So that's the first one. You cannot check the usage by web browser. Um, and number two is rename the file. So remember you, you have that rename button um, gray, not functional when you use the um, browser, uh, web browser interface. So you have to do that in, um, in command line. Uh, however, that's why uh, you probably want to, the easiest way is to um, make sure you make the name, name uh, correct before you transfer it to Chinook. That would be the best practice. Uh, because even you like use the command line, you can use the command line to transfer, uh, to rename the file. You still kind of copy paste, uh, which takes time, especially when your file is super big. Um, and if you want to rename a folder, that will be more complicated. Uh, that will take more time because in the folder, you have lots of files, which could be very huge. So um, the best practice would be before you do the transfer, just organize your folder wisely and make sure everything is correct. And then double check with another person or with your colleagues and then do the transfer. So because that place, Chinook is not the place you, are, you want to touch frequently the place is for backup data. It's not for like um, doing file management or doing like uh, daily uh, work uh, in, in Chinook. So hopefully that answer your question. Okay, is there any other questions online? Oh. So, oh. Uh, Okay, great. Uh, if there's no more questions, uh, we will see you guys uh, in the afternoon, which will be our last session, um, the further and um, data repository. Um, so thank you everyone uh, for joining um, all of the sessions <laughs> in this week, which will, um, I know that will be very tired and we, um, we will only have one last session. Okay, see everyone in afternoon. Thank you.